Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want the red. Blue, blue, give me your shit. That's my little brother. Yeah, brother. I got the little thing. Blue, blue, give me your shit. Give me your shit. Give me your shit, blue, blue. All right. You demand electoral reform and vote like this. No. All right. Okay. Greetings to all my beautiful Dominica family and friends. Cabral Douglas here, attorney at law, currently practicing in New South Wales, Australia. I just wanted to give my legal opinion on the elections in Dominica. And the first and foremost point I want to make is that Sir Dennis Byron needs to resign his position as sole electoral reform commissioner immediately. Um, his resignation is a matter of legality. It's also a matter of morality. And it's also a matter of recusing himself, as would be the case during normal legal proceedings in a case of a conflict of interest. Now, I want to first of all demystify the Sir Dennis Byron individual jurist. Sir Dennis's tenure as president of the CCJ was a disaster, objectively a disaster. It was not successful. Um, in 2014, at the time that Dominica joined the court, um, the court had all, all types of difficulties. Former registrar of the court uh, resigned or he was dismissed. And this is what he had to say. I'm talking about Dr. Lighton Jackson, who is a lecturer at the University of the West Indies Law School. Um, he said that based on the incidents of mismanagement, arbitrariness, and judicial misconduct, I think the current structure of the court is incomplete and insufficient for me to be satisfied that it is the sort of institution that I would recommend our country go into. He goes further to say that this type of practice, this type of protocol, impacts on judicial independence, the balance of power, and the regulatory accountability at the Caribbean Court of Justice. This is a direct attack on the institution that Sir Dennis presided over in 2014 at the time that Dominica joined the court. It's also important to note that it was around this time that former Barbados President Ferdinand Stewart referred to the court as, and its justices as politicians with robes taking direct aim at Sir Dennis and the fraternity of judges that made up the bench at the time. And those comments were in a relation to an election petition, which is relevant here because we're talking about the sole electoral commissioner in Dominica, which brings me to my next point. The constitution of Dominica doesn't make any provision for a sole electoral commissioner. It makes provision for an electoral commission, but it makes no provision for a sole electoral commissioner. So one has to question what is the relationship and what is the arrangements that were put in place between Roosevelt Skerritt and Sir Dennis and whether Sir Dennis is complicit in undermining free and fair elections in Dominica. So I say all of this to say that the court, the very CCJ that Sir Dennis presided over, made a decision and although it was over to dictum, which means that it didn't directly address the questions before the court, here was here is what the court gave us an opinion on the question of electoral reform in Dominica. And it appears on paragraph 108 of that petition. The court says, however, there remain grave area of concern about how the process of these elections were conducted. Future elections in Dominica ought not proceed with these or similar taints, unquote. So in other words, Sir Dennis Byron's appointment is to ensure that the taints are ameliorated through legislative reform to, uh, to pave the way for free and fair elections. So that's his mandate from the people of Dominica, right? The fact that elections were called prior to him having the opportunity to exercise that mandate, puts Sir Dennis in a conflict of interest, which necessitates his immediate resignation from the post. You cannot be a former chief justice, former president of the court, 
and deviating from the opinion of the court. You cannot be a former president of the court and not be prepared to comment on the legitimacy of the elections that took place without electoral reform, which you were appointed to bring about. You cannot be given the mandate from the people of Dominica to address what the court refers to as taints in the electoral process and allow election to take place without addressing those taints and not be associated with those taints. So it's either you're associated with the taints, you're part and parcel of the taints, or you disassociate yourself from those taints. That is what I mean by Sir Dennis finds himself in a conflict of interest, which makes his position going forward untenable. This is why it is clear that the way forward in this political constitutional quagmire is for Sir Dennis Byron, if he has one ounce of integrity in his body, to tender his immediate resignation, if he's not prepared to do that, in the same way that a justice, a, a, a Supreme Court justice, or any, any uh, judicial judge would be... Good night, Dominica. Good night, Dominica. So one more time, let me stop reading so I don't want a poor response. Good night, Dominica. And how are you doing? How are you doing? You doing all right? Well, that's good. I am not doing all right. I have a growing concern. I listened to the DBS morning news and I heard the Prime Minister of the land saying that the opposition doesn't support anything productive or progressive in the country. So I said, really? Because I am standing for electoral reform, are you? No, no, you're doing the wrong rally. I am standing for electoral reform, are you? So if you are standing, that means you are in agreement to something that is good. Can it, you you with me, right? So we're standing for something that is good. So inadvertently, he has already said he doesn't see anything good in that. Did you understand what I said? we don't stand for any big good, then he's in his in mind that election, electoral reform is so important. But guess what? In any democracy, elections are critical. And if you want to build anything good for your country, it must start with your electoral process. And guess what? The ones who get elected, they are the ones who put policy. The ones who get elected, they determine what happened to you, your children, and your children's children. The ones who get elected must go through the electoral process. Now, the extent of their stay is determined or determined by the electoral process. So if it's not important to him, then it's not something that we should sit by idly and do nothing. It is something we need to ask, we need to demand, and we need to remind them that we are the ones who determine what and when they will be there for. Is everybody getting me? Now, we, your goal as a Prime Minister is to build a structure which benefits each and every one of us. If you are goal is to build a structure which protects the right of each and every individual, then you will do what is right by you in the electoral reform. So, it does Is it for the young? Is it for the old? Or is it for self? And this is what we need to remind each and every one of us here tonight. Because it can't, it can't be that you are, your intention is to build a system that effectively represents each and every Dominican when the foundation is already flawed. And the foundation of any democracy is your electoral process. And if you refuse to fix that foundation, or if you're building, they say if you refuse 